Hey everyone, I hope you all are having a good day. My name is Christopher Wood. I am the DCE at Zion Harvester. For me, I primarily work with the junior high and senior high youth, but today I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about Samson. Before we get into that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the background of what's happening in the book of Judges, and then I'll read a little caption from the Lutheran Study Bible about each book or each chapter of Judges that goes over Samson, just so you get a little bit of an idea of the entire story. And then I'll go into different parts in a little bit more detail and then talk about how we can apply this story of Samson to our own lives. A little bit of background first. Samson was a judge and is talked about in the book of Judges in the Bible. Judges are not what you might think of when you think of judges in today's time. They're not in a court. And in the Bible time, they were more of a military le leader or a deliverer that would help deliver the Israelites out of a sticky situation that they had put themselves into more than likely. During the time of Samson, Samson, the Israelites have been ruled over by the Philistines for about 40 years. During the book of Judges, the Israelites were stuck in a cycle of disobeying the Lord and then asking for deliverance and, re and repenting for the sins that they had committed. There were two things that were a part of this cycle that the Israelites were finding themselves in. These two things were the Abrahamic covenant and the Mosaic covenant. Genesis 12, 1 through 3, God promised Abraham that he would multiply his descendants and the stars in the sky, as the stars in the sky. He would be their God and give them a specific piece of land forever. Yet even before that, God said he would bless Abraham and his descendants so that all the families of the earth would be blessed. A part of this one covenant is God's basically talking that he will never let the people of God ever be wiped out. He will always be there to take care of them and look after them. This does not, however, mean that the people of God were not going to go through some hard times. The Mosaic Covenant is a conditional covenant made between God and the nation of Israel at Mount Sinai in Exodus 19 through 24. And that covenant is the Ten Commandments. The conditional part of the Mosaic Covenant is outlined in Deuteronomy 28. If you want to take a look at it, it's a, uh, that whole chapter is all about what will happen if you continue to follow the law that God has set before you and what happens if you do not. The basics of this is, is if you follow the commandments, you will be blessed by God, but if you disobey them and turn away from God, you will be cursed, and God is going to turn away from the people. That does not mean he's not listening to them, but he is no longer keeping an eye over them. He's letting other things happen to them. <clears throat> the cycle that the Israelites are going through kind of it starts with the Abrahamic covenant the Abrahamic covenant which promises that God will always be there for his people and he always is there for his people and when they sin and no longer listen they're in the you're talking about the Mosaic Covenant a bit here. 
when they choose not to listen, they fall into hard times and they are cursed and things are pretty rough for, for them. In the case with Samson's uh, period of time, they're being ruled over by the Philistines and they're pretty much treated as a slave class or a much lower class of people than the Philistines. They're not seen as good people. They're not something that you want to be. God will eventually hear the cry out from his people. And then Abraham covenant is then instated where God steps in. He sends a judge throughout the book of Judges to help bring his people out of the sticky situation they found themselves in. And then from there, the people appreciate God there, give praises to him. But eventually, as you probably already know, they fall back into sin, turn away from God, and the cycle starts itself over again. All right, here, Samson is in Judges 13 through 16. I'm going to read the little kind of summaries of each of those chapters that is given in the Lutheran Study Bible to give you an idea of the whole story that we are talking about with Samson. For chapter 13, the Lord's messenger appeared to a barren woman, promising that she will bear a son who must live as a Nazarite and who will save Israel from the Philistines. The special experience anticipates the special life the woman's son will lead. God's word comes to us with special purpose too. In the humble forms of the pages of the Bible, the water, bread, and wine of the sacrament, and the preaching of a pastor, the Lord strengthens us and our special mission of serving him in a hostile world. Chapter 14 says, Samson sees a Philistine woman and urges his parents to approve an inappropriate marriage with her. Samson is strong physically, but weak morally. Although his hair makes him externally as a Nazarite, he violates God's law repeatedly and disrespects his parents. Despite Samson's sinfulness, the Spirit of the Lord comes upon him for the sake of God's purpose. God saves Samson and uses him to deliver Israel. God still has a plan and compassion for the weak of faith in today's time. Chapter 15, Samson goes to claim his bride only to find that her father has married her to someone else. Enraged, Samson begins a personal conflict with the Philistines. Despite Samson's rage, the Holy Spirit works through Samson to accomplish great salvation for his people. Samson rightly confesses that this is God's gift and for he is a the true judge and savior. 16 has two parts. The first part is Samson's weakness for women proves to be his doom when Delilah coaxes from him the secret for his strength. Bereft of all of his powers, Samson is at the mercy of the Philistines. Often like Samson, it is when we are weak and broken spiritually that we finally despair ourselves. In that hour, Christ is the true strong man for us spiritually. Samson carried the gates of a city, but Jesus carried the cross and all of our sin. Part two, as Samson is weak and humiliated, the Philistines ascribe their victory to their god, Dagon. In that hour, Samson turns to God in faith 
he pushes down the columns that support the roof of the temple, destroying thousands of enemies. Like Samson, Christ died for his people, but unlike Samson, Christ fulfilled the law and brought forgiveness and eternal life. All right, so that is just a little brief insight into the chapters of Judges that talk about Samson. little bit more uh, about Samson, a little bit deeper dive into the chapters that were talked about him. He was born of Manoah's wife, a barren woman with no children. He had three rules that he was told to follow because he was a Nazarite. Those rules were do not Drink strong drink, so this would have been wine or any other alcohol. He also was not to eat of the grape of the vine. Do not go near a dead body, which he does not listen to after he kills a lion on his way back, going back down the same path he had come. There is honey in the lion, and he takes the honey from the dead body of the lion, so he went near it dead body and the third one is to not cut your hair he does not do this but he lets the secret slip that that is where his powers come from and delilah later does that and we'll talk about that a little bit more later he was empowered by the spirit of the lord with great strength multiple different times as you read through the different chapters, you can see where he reaches out to the Lord and the Lord gives him the power of the strength, which he's able to accomplish things to help the Israelite people. He was probably the worst person to be a judge, maybe. There's some worse, but he was promiscuous, violent, arrogant. He was full of rage always wanted revenge. He, he isn't the guy that you think of when you think of someone blessed by God with a special strength. And to note, just because the Spirit of the Lord empowers Samson and the other judges in the book of Judges, it does not mean that God is condoning what these people are doing. God is keeping his promise to his people, which is to save them, his Abrahamic covenant. But all that God really has at this time is a bunch of different corrupt people to work through. So that's exactly what he does. He works through corrupt people to save his people as a whole. Eventually, Samson marries a Philistine woman against the advice of what he should do. He should have married a Israelite woman, woman and been in a relationship with her, but he never listened to his parents, never listened to the law and what God had told his people to do. And in doing so, she is bribed to plot against Samson so that the Philistines can capture him. She asks him multiple times, hey, how are you getting your powers? And he tells a lie about how he gets his powers and breaks out of the binds that he's put in every single time until the very end. Eventually, he tells her the truth, not truck, of where his powers comes from, which is his hair. And in the night, it is cut, and he is captured. When he is captured, he is taken to the temple where he is enchained between two pillars where he is put to be made fun of because of his lack of power and because he was an Israelite. He wasn't a Philistine, so he was put on 
display to the public to be shamed, pretty much. He never gets away from the Philistines once he is captured, but he is blessed with the strength of the Spirit of the Lord once more when he prays out to the Lord as he as he is being shamed between the pillars. With that strength, he pushes against the two pillars and crumbles the building, killing everybody underneath the building and himself. He kills more Philistines then than he had ever done in his entire lifetime. Applying the story of Samson to our own lives. Looking at it at first, it was a little difficult for me to come up with a way on how we can apply Samson's story to our lives. Now, we might not be doing all the crazy bad things that Samson was doing, but every day we find ourselves in a bit of a struggle between what we know our Christian self should be doing and what our sinful flesh wants us to do. There's this tug and pull that you see between in Samson's life, and that is also at work in our own life. And I think that's important to note because it also shows the importance of this story to the overall Bible. Samson, just like us, is in this daily struggle with sin. And even though he's a very sinful person, God chooses to use him for the benefit of of Christianity and the benefit, in his case, the benefit for the Israelite people. God, throughout the Bible, uses unlikely people to spread his message and protect his people. Just because we are living in a life of sin, life full of sin, doesn't mean we cannot be used by God and doesn't mean that we can't live a Christian life, even though we are surrounded by it daily. God uses us all in multiple different ways, whether we know it or not. We are all blessed with gifts from God. For Samson, it was his strength. His strength was that was given to him by God, allowed him to help the Israelite people. God works through all of us in different ways, no matter who we are, God uses our gifts to help him to do what he sees fit in the world and spread the word of God. And this doesn't mean that you need to go out and donate all of your money or donate all of your time to a charity or a mission trip. If you're able to do something like that, awesome, go ahead. But this can be as simple as just being kind to people you bump into in your daily life. It doesn't need to be this big heroic thing. It doesn't need to be you working in a church. It can be as simple as being kind and living out a Christian life so that you can be an example of what Christ is to us. We're not going to get it perfect, but as long as we're working towards doing that daily, we can become better at it and become more Christ-like as we go throughout our lives. One thing that I think about that when I was one thing I was thinking about when I was going through this was about how to apply it to our lives was how I apply it to my own personal life. That is, I know that I am blessed, just like each and every one of you, with different gifts and abilities from God. Every night before I go to bed and in my prayers, I ask God that he will use me and my gifts in the way that he sees most fit for the benefit of his kingdom. Right now, for me, this is working at Zion, spreading the word of God to those who are 
like yourselves listening to me talk and the youth that come into my different programs that I am doing. Just something that you might want to do when you're praying at night is ask God to help you use your gifts for the benefit of his kingdom. Because not all the time are we going to do that. Sometimes we are selfish with our gifts and use them for our own benefits when we could be using them for the benefit of the kingdom of God. Samson was selfish with his gifts several times and took revenge out on people that had wronged him when he was enraged, when he didn't need to. He used that strength to take that revenge. But he also used them for very good things which was to help the Philistines out of the oppression, or not the Philistines, the Israelites, out of the oppression they were faced by the Philistines. We all have these different gifts, and I think that it is up to us with the help of God to be able to share them with the world in each of our own unique and individual ways. And I hope that you guys are able to do that for yourselves. I hope that you guys are able to do that in your own lives and be able to share the wonderful love of God that we all know by using your gifts in your own personal lives, in your own jobs, and throughout what you do in a weekly basis. Thank you guys for having me on here, and I look forward to sharing with you guys again. Have a good day.